Hi, this is Phil from SkiThought.com, and we are here at Rosignol's headquarters here in Park City, Utah, and we're going to talk about the history of the look binding, and specifically the pivot with Dennis Gaspari. Dennis, what is your title here with the Rosignol, actually Dina Star look? Yeah, I look. am the Vice President of Sales and Marketing for Dina Star Lang and Look. Okay. So I oversee the U.S. business here. In so you're familiar the with Rosignol the... Group. I'm very familiar with luck. With the, the, the <laughs> pivot binding going back into the 60s, and what we're going to start right now is we're going to start in the 1960s, where it all started with look, and mm -hmm. that is going to be, I think it was 1963 was the first pivot? Well, if you want to define pivot, right, it's the combination of the toe and the heel. Okay. And I believe that the Nevada toe predated the Grand Prix heel. Okay. And the Grand Prix heel was more of a rudimentary turntable without sort of the sophistication of the bindings we have here. But you're right, that was honestly late 50s, early 60s. And I think they were developed independently and then sort of brought together. So then brought into late 60s and Keeley, I believe, skied the bindings yes. in 68. Yeah. So um, we've got a long history and Mechanically, the binding really hasn't changed dramatically through the years in the simplest form of its functions. Yeah, the single pivot toe mm -hmm. and turntable heel are still the foundation of the modern pivot design. Obviously, the toe is more sophisticated with 360 degrees of release. You know, um, it is still the most sophisticated binding and one of the oldest designs at the same time. Yep. So it's been around for a while. Again, we've got some examples here from the 1960s that are going to evolve into the 1970s. So you've got a little bit of the history where it started in the 60s. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to go into the 1970s when things really started to evolve a little bit more. Right. Okay, great. So let's go into the next generation there. Okay, Dennis, now we're into the 1970s. The N17 moved up into, into the 70s, mm -hmm. and we had a couple of different color variations of right. that that it came into. Uh, we had the silver, which was this right, standard the color, and then we've got the red here, mm -hmm. and there's also a blue version of it also. Yeah, and I don't remember that one. So, so a little we, bit before my time. Yeah. But. So we do see a couple of them showing up online, and mm -hmm. we've got some in our on our site here. Again, picture showing here of that blue binding, and then... From that point, then we evolved into the and the 37, 57, mm -hmm. and 77. Right. And that's when things, again, started to move forward. We started seeing breaks mm -hmm. on the bindings. Uh, the heel was very similar. We have a centering device now on the heel right. that we didn't have on the earlier generations. And a little more contact. And a little more contact through there. You're right. And then elasticity was probably still about the same. I think so. Again, yep. so we still have the pinch time. of winds, mm -hmm. wings on the toe, and then we also got into DIN standards, right. and, and that's when we got into this. Now, the 37 here was a little bit of unusual, more of an entry level mm -hmm. in that. Um, simplicity was a little bit more in the in the heel, and then a toe here that almost was more like the GT toe right. in this one here. Again, we do have the break here, and this is when we brought into the mid to late 70s, and that's where the N77 ran through, and then even into a early little bit of the early yeah, 80s. I think 83 is when the next generation. When the next out. generation comes in, and we're going to see that in our next segment here. But in the N77, we saw a couple different versions of that. There was the N77 and also just the 77, and that's going to be different colors usually in the window. We have the mm -hmm. black writing as compared to the silver writing in that. But this is where the loyalty really exploded with that of the pivot is coming into that 77 series. Yeah, and you know my experience is both from a consumer. I My first pair of bindings were a pair of N57s. Okay from Hickory and Tweed, which you know well, yep. near my hometown back east. And then right after college, I actually worked at Hickory and Tweed, where the only binding they sold was Look. And I think that's really where my love for the brand started and, and loyalty to the binding because of the performance, but, but the protection 
Well, that really says a lot for a shop to have loyalty to one brand at a time when mm -hmm. we had a multitude of different sure. buying options so out Alamein, there. Solomon, Tyrolia, Marker were wildly Spademan, successful. I mean, mm -hmm. at that point in that their early 80s, there was a multitude of different brands. Yeah. Gates A was still out there as a brand mm -hmm. and before you guys as a preempt a little bit further is where that was brought in under your right. umbrella. So for this generation in the 70s, then now we're going to transfer into the 1980s. Okay, now we're into the 1980s. And we this is where the heel design changed a little bit. We, we weren't as vertical of a heel. Right. We went to the mm -hmm. one easy, a little more easily accessible in the back as far as coming out with your pole. But we also started playing with different brake designs mm -hmm. in, in the 80s. We had the original forward-facing brake that was on the early generations. Right. And this was our second generation of brake here, which was also a toe brake. But it is a rearward-facing brake, so it was less chance of catching that. Now, mm -hmm. that was short-lived with this. You had a mid-cycle change where you went to the rear brake, which is like on this right. this one here. And again, in the picture, we can you can see the different variations of the different brakes that we had for this generation of bindings. And you also got into the sensor toe now. So let's talk a little bit about how that sensor toe worked. Well, my understanding, and again, this is predating working with the company, is that the sensor would basically reduce the spring tension when it sensed a forward force to help increase the, the releaseability. Mm -hmm. in, Just a little bit smoother lateral release yeah. out of the toe. And the other thing that we noticed also with this generation of bonding is that the wings did get a little more elongated. Right. So for more elasticity right. in the toe. Mm -hmm. So we still also had the ability of a toe height adjustment on these, which was nice. Right. Now, the unusual one that we have here that really gets missed by a lot, and that is the 19. And this was actually a junior version, a two to six range binding on this one here. It does not have any upward compensation, but this is the one binding that delved a little bit into that junior binding, mm -hmm. which would be really nice to bring in. We've got a lot of freestylers that are mm -hmm. skiing in pivots and to have that lower um, entry in that binding would be a really nice option. Now, the other thing that we see on this generation of is you did have that metal cup in the heel, <laughs> something that we've been clamoring for a long time for cup. Lift to bring back. Yes. So that's something we'd like to see back at mm -hmm. some point, maybe a little glimpse into Stay the tuned. future there. Stay for tuned 20, there. Four twenty-five. But the 80s were breaking down into kind of two areas, and that's the early 80s, and that is the um, the 89 series, and that was also um, a lower version, again, the 19, and also a 59 version of that, I believe, too. And the 99. Too. And the 99. Hide in. Yep, and that was the metal area. heel where this heat one here is still the right. composite heel. And you can see um, in the picture as far as the generations, uh, I'm sorry, the different levels that are available in that binding. But now we get into the mid 80s and the late 80s where again, we had another big change right. with look. So we take these guys away here and we're gonna bring in the XM or as I call it, the Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> And this was actually had upward release out of the toe. You can see the arrows here and you can see in the picture here on how that toe does come up. So you've got that ability with this and you also had a different AFD on this. It actually adjusted up and down and also a slight different design in the heel here with a little more compact in, in the heel. But this was really a different delving of, of the look generation and also probably one of the heaviest ones that you guys made. Yes, but to your point, the, the key is the upper toe release. Right. And the thing that makes you look unique in terms of upper toe release is that you do not need to have the heel move backwards in order for the toe lugs to clear the wings. It has pure vertical release. That was and also- that has stayed consistent from this binding all the way to the modern body. Right. And then we get into the ZRC, the right. ZP, the ZL, the yeah. different variations of this. Mm -hmm. And really, this is much more of a cosmetic difference that we're going to see into the future going into. Right. More streamlined, lighter. Exactly. 
it took some of the mass out of this. Mm -hmm. You see this color combination. This was designed to go with the the Rossi 4SK, yeah. the Blizzard Thermo, mm -hmm. which was also the same color that this binding looked really good right. on. I had the purple and yellow version. The purple and yellow version, which actually looked really good on the on the seven the the Rossi, the 7S, mm -hmm. uh, and the 7G. Uh, that binding worked really well with. But again, we've got different uh, AFD design here, which is part of their th of the 3D system as far as the adjustability mm -hmm. in that AFD. So this is coming through the 80s, and now we're going to come into the 1990s. Okay, now we're into the 1990s. Now that ZR toe that we just saw mm -hmm. from the late 80s really went on a diet when it came into the 90s, and right, that's when we've this. got mm -hmm. this toe here. And this is probably one of the most aggressive, when you went to the Forza, color options that we have. Sure. I mean, there is just a multitude mm -hmm. of different color options that you have on that. And really, it gets into the modern single pivot heel that we have here. So right. some, some single pivot toe. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So this one here really is that modern incarnation mm -hmm. of what, what we have on the market right, right now. And this was with Plake and Tamba. And this is where a lot of people really start getting excited mm -hmm. with look. And if I recall correctly, even into the late 2000s, that was that was the one bind that was probably on the indemnification the longest mm -hmm. because of the simple the, the beauty was sure. the simplicity of it and how well it performed. And again, not much change in the heel from from the from the 80s right. but again a multitude of different uh, color options on that mm -hmm. and also a multitude of din ranges on it we had um I, three to I, ten three to ten right. i believe also i'll double check there's also a nine yeah don't remember that but yeah there, there's, there was, there a, was a, a, a lighter ladies ten. version yeah. of, it was the z3 that okay. is that is the nine and again you'll see that in the picture mm -hmm. here as far as the different options there. And then from there into the mid-90s, we got into the TT bindings. And there was a TT07, TT08, mm -hmm. TT09. And that also had, um, again, upward release here, had the cap capture here, which actually you can control that right. amount of upward release there too. And again, still staying with our same heels. And we've even seen people that are retrofitting these heels if they need that narrow binding because that – the back of that one, the spring housing, will attach right to that one if you need, if need be. And at this point, this is where you see the influence of Rosignol's purchase of Gates A. Yes. Come into looks designs as yep. well. And that's where getting into the late 90s in that Rosignol toe, and that's when the FKS came out, and then the influence of that into this toe here with the dual pincher design. And in this generation also, we did get into sliding Applying AFDs AFD, right. for smoother release. So, but this FKS toe from the from that gate say mm -hmm. actually influenced a lot of the toe here, which again is what we're seeing on our newest generation of binds in its right. modern incarnations. We've mm -hmm. got grip walk ability capability on that, but again, with the dual pincher here and full three six, uh, sorry, a one eighty release right. out of the toe here. Right, and still to this day, you know, this design remains. Yep. And this design yeah. remains. And it just shows you the longevity of these designs that they still function and perform. And I think that's incredibly important for people. Again, your tagline is I trust look. Right. And again, going back mm -hmm. to this, again, bindings are about balance of retention and release mm -hmm. and, and that you want to have confidence in your bindings yeah. and whether you want to release and, or, or hold you in at certain points. Right. And that's what we have in, with the elasticity mm -hmm. in the toe and in the heel. And again, the tibial release out of that heel in the toe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now from the 90s, let's come into this century, into the 2000s. Okay, at the turn of the century, we have to, first of all, have a moment of silence for the pivot. <laughs> it went away for a little bit. Why? What happened? Well, I joined the company in 2004. Okay. And the pivot had just gone away. It was not so much the pivot that we all know and love. It was that second generation, kind of this design mm -hmm. that didn't quite, in my opinion, measure up to the performance of sort of the, you know, the original right. designs. Uh, I can tell you on the Dinastar side, 
the then global president of Dinastar wanted to brand all the bindings Dinastar and basically had killed the look brand. And the, the interesting story is the Japanese distributor had a contract to distribute the look brand. And so they had to keep manufacturing look bindings. And so through the Japanese distributor, I brought looks to the US and kept the brand around through 2004, 2005, maybe even into 2006. And then they realized that the brand had tremendous value. Yeah. And they brought back the brand and then subsequently in 2009, brought the pivot back. Right. So for for about 15 years, actually almost 20 years, we had the Rosniel bindings and look bindings right. running concurrent. Mm -hmm. um, this is the Rosniel example of uh, the second generation. I'm not sure if you really call it second generation. Right, but, but what, that heel. Yeah, of, yeah. Or the, the horseshoe heel and quite frankly what I refer to as the new Coke of, of right. pivots. And really you <laughs> didn't have the, um, the elasticity much, right, and the travel. smoothness of it. Mm -hmm. And I know this was used in some race applications, but it was quickly learned that actually the SPX heel was much, much was a much better coupling and mm -hmm. abandoned this. Although and Bodie Miller raced on pivots right up until the end yeah. when he left uh, the Rosnell group to go yep. somewhere else. So yeah, there were still some people racing on pivots, again, like Bodie, mm -hmm. but this, this was the race binding, and then that got into the SPX2 and from, on the Rosnell well, side. First, the the and PX, yeah. SPX and X. on the Rosnell side, the, uh, the axial, mm -hmm. and hence the, the, the right. motif on this one here. But at this point, then, the first ones that came back in that late... Um, late 2000s was pretty much in race and free ride application and uh, mm -hmm. the 12 and the 18 were the ones that came out and there were some 15s for for the race skis right not for free ride not for free right. ride and then we also still had the part of the pushback was bringing back the sil the silver version mm -hmm. which is kind of a call back to the original the yeah. original and that was that was the plan to make it chrome mm -hmm. like the original one and uh, the painted version came out quite well i actually prefer what we call now the raw raw which has no treatment other than a little bit of varnish to keep it from so pitting or deteriorating and then again we had the 15 there then evolving into the 12 the 14 which is the same right. house again and spring difference and the 18 mm -hmm. And then in about 2015 or so um, is then when we pushed to bring back the 15 because as a free ride application, a lot of it because of the spring rake that was available in that bind starting at a six. Yeah. And again, these are designs that they had yeah. in the 90s and it took some convincing and also success that we were having specifically in the U.S. to convince the the French that this binding would be a success. And I still remember the conversations. They were afraid that it would undermine the 18. And the 18 is an athlete bind. Yeah. And there were many people, myself included, skiing on it because we wanted the metal toe mm -hmm. and had no business being on a binding right. that goes from eight to 18. Right. So after, like I said, a lot of convincing and the success that we were having with the other models, including Forza colors. Mm -hmm. They brought back the 15, and that's when we introduced it in the three colorways. Yes. The gold, the raw, and Forza 2.0. We had that fun marketing campaign. Yep. that was great. And that's really when, in the U.S., uh, the higher-end pivot sales blew up. Yep. And that's and have been growing yeah. since. And that's also right around the same time that the that the FK the Rosnio bindings went away and everything was branded look across yeah, the board. Yeah, that was I think a little bit before that, but the group made the decision to get behind a single brand, a binding specific brand, and really push it. And both of our sales forces sell it. They share in the commissions, and I think it's been a win for all parties in, in, you know, involved. The group, the dealers, the consumer, look pioneered this technology. 
it's still a wonderful brand with a tremendous amount of history, heritage, and equity. And we're, again, having tremendous success. And that 15 now has to be one of your top sellers. It is. You know, certainly in terms of there. dollars, but it's right there with the 12 in terms of units. Yeah. So I think that's really good. Again, it's the confidence that we, again, we come back to, I trust, look, mm -hmm. um, that confidence that people have in that simple and pure design of, of a binder yeah. and it works so well and again that 15 um, is really good again this is an earlier version of it um, again it's one of the areas that we really pushed on to bring this back and this one here is still the um, the the DIN AFD on this one then the new ones you do have the grip walk obviously everything's gone grip walk now mm -hmm. as far as the AFD and there's also WTR version of that that was short-lived in that process mm -hmm. but we got rid of this guy here and then pretty much from these guys here are still the it goes back to right. the the other ones well yeah we tweaked the toe piece a little bit right but the full drive yeah concept i mean that's consistent. still there there's very little difference other than the stanchion that this comes on to wider yeah. and yeah a little bit wider there nice there and the wings are also a, a little bit wider mm -hmm. there. it's like a couple of millimeters wider there mm -hmm. heel really hasn't changed nope. at all i'm gonna bring this guy Get nope. your yeah, I, I already got that once. So we're gonna leave that down there. But then we got into our Forza colors here, the uh -huh. Forza 3.0 colors, um, and then the different colors that they've mm -hmm. had through the years. And you can see through the different generations and the pictures that we're bringing up here that you're seeing all the different waves that were available on us. But I mean, the following that this binding here I, on the freestyle mm -hmm. tour. On the mogul side, I think you're probably 90% of the bindings that the freestylers yeah. are using. We, you know, we have no partnerships with any of the mogul ski brands. Yeah, they choose to use the bindings and, and actually purchase them. Yeah, and in many cases, purchase them for their athletes. ID one being probably the most popular yeah. one out there, um, and and we appreciate that. And that's kind of the great thing about look is these independent entities, whether it's ski brands that we have as customers or the cast touring system, yep. for example, or this new young man from, I believe, Bozeman Crasher, yes. who is painting the, the bindings and has now a, a huge following. It's all happening organically. Yeah. And it, that shows me that this brand has that incredible following and, and value. And so I'm probably most proud of what Look has been able to do in the last 20 years or so. No, I, again, I, I'm really excited about it too. Again, uh, my commitment to it, again, with the collection that I have as far as the different bindings and through the generations of it. And it's it's fun to see all the nuanced differences mm -hmm. as it comes through, whether it be the color waves, uh, the first edition of the Forza that was different variations mm -hmm. of the red, the yellow, and the yeah. orange, and even just red orange, and some different ones that you, I think you're probably, your designers had a lot of fun playing with. They do. And you know, we have some technology now where we can do some custom designs, and we've done that for some customers. We've also done it with signature models for athletes. And one of the, the ways that they can customize is using a hydro dip process where there's an actual film that has the cosmetic and the, the toe piece or the heel piece is actually put underwater and comes up through the film and the film drapes itself and adheres to the toe or you know the, the heel cover. And that gives us even more options in terms of cosmetics. Yeah. And it gets, again, we, we touched on this a little bit, is the loyalty to the brand. There's a, a collection of free ride skiers back in the, I think it was the late, to, late 2000s, early um, 2010s, that actually skied for another brand mm -hmm. that actually had... In their contract. <laughs> had your body, let's just say that they were red. So, and with a little arrow, little uh, design on them. But again, the loyalty that people have in this mm -hmm. mining. So this is, again, a look back at the looks history. I think it was a lot of fun. Any comments that you'd like to have in your, put in a selection below. I mean, these bindings are fun. These designs are fun because in the end, 
Skiing is fun. If you enjoyed this informative video, hit that bell, subscribe so that you'll stay up to date on the new videos and check out SkiTalk.com for more ski related content. Also, please follow SkiTalk.com on all of your social media channels. No scenes from Hot Tub Time Machine were reenacted during the production of this video.